Good day once again, everyone. And I welcome you to this uh, second part of our discussion on PA systems. In the first part, we discussed uh, what makes up a PA system and how a PA is different from sound reinforcement. What we are discussing today is mainly sound reinforcement. The PA is a small version of sound re reinforcement as we discussed in the first section. In this section, we're going to look at uh, how the system is set up. So I'll be uh, working with some slides, uh, which will come up in a minute. Um, to start, we want to look at a conceptual system of the signal chain. Like we discussed in the first section, you remember we uh, broke the system into three major sections, the input, the processing, and the output section. And we describe the components of um, each of this um, section. So we'll start this slideshow now, and then um, we'll be able to look at what goes on in each of these um, systems. So we're looking at uh, the input system as it were. Now, continuing from there, the basic equipment setup consists of uh, a microphone, a mixer, an amplifier, and a loudspeaker. This basic system will work in any way or anywhere we want. You have, you, you talk and your sound will come out of the main speakers. But we discussed a lot of other processing equipment uh, in the first section. We'll go a little bit more into in depth into that. If you look at our uh, uh, this more complex system, we have in between each of these groups of systems, you can insert what we call peripherals. I call them peripherals because without them, your system will work. But these peripherals enhance the workings of your systems. And these peripherals are basically processing equipment. In the first stage, this first set of peripherals, you can have uh, equalizers, uh, graphic, parametric, compressors, gates, limiters inserted between your microphones and the input of your mixer. Now, once the signal gets into the mixer and the mixer finishes processing, you can also insert processing again or processing devices between the mixer and the amplifier. Basically, here we usually would have um, compressors and limiters crossovers. Remember, we mentioned crossovers in the first section where we said a crossover is used to split the signal into the different sections as it would be required. Now, after the amplifier, usually you only have compressors, the, uh, sorry, crossovers, like I mentioned before, high level passive crossovers that you can insert between your amplifier and the speakers. Usually these particular peripherals will be found inside the loudspeaker boxes. So now how do we make all of this happen? There are protocols and connectors that we use to connect each of these devices to the next one. So we're going to take a basic look at these connectors. Uh, if you look at your screen, these are some of the basic connectors that I'm sure many of you have come across. We have, if you, over here, we have the uh, popularly called the jack. We call it the TS jack because it's broken into two sections, the tip and the sleeve. Over here, we have what we call RCA in, in the past, and some people still call it phono connectors, RCA connectors. And here we have these um, connectors that is used for playing back from small devices like MP3 players, like uh, phones and all. This is another type of that that you can use. You can see it has about four rings on it. Uh, the rings serve different purposes, but we discuss all of that fully later. So these are different sizes of connectors, as you can see. The big one that you see that you use to connect instruments and devices, but usually that will have only one ring like this one here has. Uh, this one you can see has two rings, so they are more used to 
connect devices rather than instruments. Um, you have these other ones here and the female section of it, and then the ports into which you connect um, these uh, plugs. Now, here are more uh, connectors that can be found in various uh, of our devices. These are um, as from the top, you can see the Firewire 6 pin, 4 pin. Uh, these tend to have a, a lot of signal bandwidth. We have pin terminals and the banana plugs. These ones are used in the old type of last speakers and in installation speakers where you uh, your speakers is connected through your speaker cable is connected through this connector into your amplifier then we have other ones uh, that fit into binding posts speed terminals uh, usually there'll be a screw to hold this down same thing here and then we have the very common ones that are used in the microphones the xlr plug, plugs male and xlr female then we have this bnc BNC plugs are mostly used in um, in digital systems for antenna purposes, but it's BNC because it locks into place. It's another type of this particular plug here, which is an F plug, as it is called, used in connecting antennas and stuff like that. And then over here you have the phone connectors, the RCA phono connector. This is also phono, only that the uh, ring around here is a bit shorter. These are all phono plugs. You have these ones that we call the optical plugs. Optical plugs are slightly different from the others in that they do not um, carry the signal with a wire. We'll discuss a little bit more of that later. And then we have other ones that are set for digital audio, S video plugs, you know of that. Uh, I'm sure the S video plugs most of the time has to carry both video and audio. And then you have these other ones that we described earlier phone plugs. More connectors coming up. Okay, now we have over here connectors with their names and the symbols that are used to represent them if you are looking at your uh, manuals or in documentation that comes with most of this device. The very first one here is unusual for uh, some people. I'm sure uh, some of us will be familiar with it. This is called the SP diff. It looks like RC, RCA plugs, like an RCA plug. But it's, uh, the SP diff is short for Sony Philips Digital Interface. It was a protocol developed by Sony and Philips in conjunction for transferring digital signals. Digital signals, like I said, are you know zeros and ones the kind that computer reads and then we have the xlr male or female this, this symbol represents both both of them and then we have this one that we use for loudspeakers mainly and there's a version of it that's used to connect power those ones are called power cons for speakers they're called speak on plugs now speak on plugs come in three main varieties you can have others but they are not familiar the varieties you have are two pin speak on for connecting single speakers, four pin speak on for connecting by amp systems, in other words, two speakers. And then we have the eight pin system that can be used to connect up to four speakers. That's speak on. There are also locking connectors in that once you plug it into place, it's, you have to unlock it before you can pull it out of wherever it has been plugged into. And then we have the two versions of the jack the commonly known uh, jack plugs that we say this is the ts version and the trs version uh, like i said later in this discussion i would explain or would explain how uh, these connectors or connections are made and then you have the basic rca uh, which you find in the back of uh, cassette players and cd players and generally consumer products now we have this MIDI, for those of us who are musicians as well, you know MIDI was a protocol that was used very much in the past. I believe some people still use it. It's Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's, a, it's an interface used to interconnect musical instruments so that you can use the resources of other instruments by playing on 
on another instrument. Then we have the USB, which I'm sure everybody is aware of right now, by now. And then we have Firewire. Before the USB became very popular, Firewire was the main protocol for transferring data between uh, machines, especially when you are doing a lot of, um, when you are transferring a lot of data because it has a bigger bandwidth. But I believe right now the USB 3.0 has surpassed the Firewire in speed. And then we have the ADAT, usually used in recording studios, a format for transferring multi-channel audio signals. Below here is just another uh, chart for the same thing that we just um, talked about. Now, since we discussed in the first section that you can have digital or analog signals, you can have digital and analog systems, um, these particular connectors are the ones mainly used for digital connections. As you can see, there's a, the first one is a TOS link. TOS link is short for Toshiba, Toshiba link. It's a smaller form of the SPD cable fiber cable. Usually, these are optical connectors. They are for transferring signals that are carried in the optic, optical domain. You don't use wire, it's just light. The cables sometimes are referred to as light pipes. And then we have the coaxial, again, for transferring uh, digital signals, digital clocks. And some uh, digital audio links use these connectors as well. And then we have the BNC, which does much the same thing, usually used in coaxial connections too, but with locking connectors, as in you can lock them in place to prevent accidental disconnections. And then of course we have the uh, 1.8 TRS jack, which is used again in computers for taking out or inputting signals into computer systems. Now, for these connection, connections or connectors that I described earlier, we've broken them into categories. We have what we call the balanced and unbalanced. And then we have the analog and then the digital. As you can see, the quarter inch is used more, mainly for analog connections. And this is the TS version. So it, it, if it's the TS version, then it is unbalanced. We will describe this in more details later. Then we have the 3.5 mm. As you can see, this one has two rings. So it's going to be a TRS connection. And then we have XLR. Um, XLRs, again, are used for what we call balanced signals. Predominantly, they can be used for balanced as well. It all depends on the wiring. Um, these are three-pin XLRs. They are the most common in audio. There are four-pin XLRs, five-pin, six-pin XLRs also exist, but they're used for other applications. And then we have the speaker plugs. Like I described earlier, we have the RCA, which I'm sure we're familiar with. All of these are for analog connections, as you can see. And then on this side, you can see the MIDI connector, which I think has five pins, but used again for musical instruments. And then you have the TOS link, which is a connector for uh, optical connections. And then we have the banana plugs. For those of us who have uh, had the opportunity to look in the back of some amplifiers, you see these red and black terminals with a hole in the middle of them. These are the plugs that plug, that go directly into those holes. Those red and black posts can also be screwed tight. And in that way, we call them the, we call them, uh, binding posts. And then currently, the most popular USB connections are the USB-C connectors, which again runs faster than the original USB. And then you have the HDM I. Now, this is used to carry both video and audio, multi-channel audio, HDMI, very commonly in use right now. And then you can see in, uh, in terms of these ones, uh, balanced or unbalanced signals do not matter when we are talking about digital. They will carry balanced or unbalanced anyhow you want it. Uh, and uh, banana plugs are predominantly unbalanced as this uh, panel shows. Now, the common, most common connector types that we will come across are, like I said, the XLR plugs, the phone jack, quarter-inch phone jack, either two-pin or three-pin, or two-conductor, three-conductor 
conductors. And then we have the RCA, again, otherwise known as the phono plug. And then we have the mini jacks, the one eight inch jacks. Some are two conductors and some are three conductors. Now, going further, let's look at how um, the phone jacks are connected. If you look at a phone jack, this is a, a picture of one. The one that has only one, this black portion of it is called the ring. It separates the terminals one from the other. So you have, in this case, you have a tip and then you have the sleeve. The tip usually is the one that takes the signal wire and then the sleeve will take the ground wire. Now, the ones that have two rings, most commonly known as stereo jack plugs. They are TRS jack plugs, T for tip, R for ring, and S for sleeve. So you have TRS jack plugs, commonly used for balance signal because um, they, they can carry two signals. And I will explain this uh, uh, in, in the next uh, few panels. Now the connectors, as you can see, for an XL, XLR, a three-pin XLR, the pins are numbered the way, uh, as you can see them. Um, you have, this is the male XLR connector, and this would be the female XLR current connectors, and the connectors are numbered, all of them the same way. The pin three is always the one in the middle. Now for the male XLR, pin one is the one on, my right here, and then pin two is the one on the left. Now, as this chart shows, pin two is commonly used for carrying the positive signal, positive polarity signal. Again, like I said, we'll explain this better later. And pin three usually will carry the negative going signal, and then the third one will be for the shield or the screen, sometimes known as ground wire. More explanations on this in the next uh, slides. Now, this is an example of an unbalanced connection, as you can see. Now, um, to avoid the confusion between balanced and unbalanced signals, balanced signals must be carried with two conductors, while unbalanced signals will be carried by one conductor. Why do we need this? The voltages involved in running signals across amplifiers across devices in sound system are usually very low, but they are also susceptible to interference by light bulbs, electromagnetic interference from each of these different uh, lighting controllers and all of that. Now, if you look at this particular uh, picture, you see there's a wire there designated a ground wire, and then the wire that carries the signal by itself. So between these two, then you can get you get your signal output. For this kind of connections, you only need a TS jack plug. Or if you want to use an XLR, like I said earlier, you can use an XLR plug for unbalanced connection. Pin one and pin three of the XLR are connected together to the ground wire, but it also carries the negative signal. So it can be both ground and the negative. And then pin two will carry the positive signal. Um, I need to mention here that there are a few protocols elsewhere that reverses the functions of pin two and three, where instead of pin two carrying the positive signal, pin three carries the positive signal. So you need to look in the documentation of your device before you do your connections. Now, this next one is, a representation of balanced connection, as you can see. Now, the way this happens is you have your two conductors, two conductors that are connected to the connector. Now, one of the conductor carries the positive signal, the second one will carry a negative signal. Now, at the end of this, we have what we call a summing amplifier, which adds the two signals together, thereby giving you an output that is more powerful than each of these two put together. Now, usually the advantage of this kind of connection is that when noise comes in, noise would be on each of these connectors with the same polarity. At the summing amplifier, because one is reversed 
in respect to the other. The interfered interference signal gets cancelled out. So these ones tend to be used for much longer connections than the unbalanced um, signal cables. Now, for the XLR connection, you can see the outer one, the screen, is connected to pin one, otherwise known as ground. And then you have the positive one to pin two and the negative uh, connector to pin three. In the case of the TRS jack, sleeve or ground wire is connected over here. And then the ring will hold the cold negative going signal while the tip will hold the positive signal. That's uh, tip would be equal to a ring uh, pin two in an XLR plug. Now you can have balanced connections between the TRS jack and an XLR. Okay, so that's the case with balanced or unbalanced wiring. Now, finally, we look at the cables that are used for each of these different uh, uh, connections. Now, you know, we can have three types of cables. We can have speaker cables, cables used to connect speakers to amplifiers usually. And then we have signal cables that are used to carry signal between the devices, like an equalizer to an amplifier, like the mixer to a speaker management system from speaker management system to amplifiers. Cables are used for that. Um, inside the loudspeaker where you have uh, the crossover inside the box, the connections are made with speaker cables. Those are no longer signal cables. And that's why we call them high-end. Okay, so that's the case for the cable. So we we'll look at some cables now. Uh, here, you can see uh, over here we have what we call the twisted pair microphone cables. These tend to be better than others because the twists helps to reduce the amount of interference that comes in from external devices. And that's why we call it the twisted pair. But if you look over here, you see that there are two kinds of shields on it. There is this braided wire outside, which is a screen shield. And then there is an aluminum, uh, a foil kind of shielding. Now the foil provides maximum shield from interference, whereas the braid allows for flexibility in the screen connection. Microphone cables, as you know, tend to get folded, bent along the way while being used. Now, in the case of the twisted, um, sorry, in the braided shield here, when the mic is being bent, the gaps between the shield tends to expand sometimes, and that allows interference to go through. But in this particular case, because of the additional screening provided by the foil, it will stop those extra. But the foil can easily be broken too. That's why foil alone is usually not used in this kind of microphone cable. Then you have this other type, which is shielded, but also has this strand of cable. This type are used for installations where long cable lengths are needed. And these take the strain of the copper or whatever other connect um, uh, metal material was used in the cable from breaking through being stretched across uh, longer distances. This is another type. Again, this is a braided type, like this one here. You can see it's braided. When you want to make the connection, you have to separate the braid from the connectors, and then uh, it's twisted this way before you now connect to either an XLR or a jack plug or an RCA, if that's what you want to use. <laughs> these are other examples of braided, but these are single connectors, as you can see. There's only one connector coming out of this, but you have a braid. This is also, it's not braided. It's, um, uh, how do I put it now? It's, it's just screen wire wrapped around, just a wrapped one. And then you can see the, another braided type here, uh, connector. These are signal cables and microphone cables. Microphone cables predominantly have to have two connectors, but signal cables need only one connector most of the time. Uh, before we leave this panel, I want to remind us that so I told you earlier that some of those um, TRS connectors are also called stereo plugs. Now, stereo is different from balanced. A stereo plug carries two separate signals, one for the right and one for the left. 
Now that is very different from balanced or unbalanced. If you want to look at it, then it would mean that that signal is actually unbalanced. But stereo means two separate signals. Okay. Now, if you look at this, uh, like what I just described now, this is a stereo cable. It's a signal cable, but it's a pair joined together. Each one has the conductor and the screen. So this could be used for the right, and this would be used for the left of your stereo system. Another one of another example of a shielded uh, audio cable. You can see the shield in this case is an aluminum foil, but we have this uh, stranded wire running the length of the cable. These ones will usually be used in installation systems where you are not going to be moving the cables around much because like I said, moving them around tends to spoil the foil shielding. It will break and then that would be where interference would come in. This is another type, uh, wounded shielding, a bit like the one here. Again, these are single connectors but with single wire inside it, used for maybe stereo connections or just basic signal connections. Now, these are other types of cables that you come across from time to time. As you can see, now let's look at the ones below here first. These are speaker cables. Speaker cables do not need shielding because basically the voltage carried within speaker cables are high enough to prevent interference from becoming an issue with them. Many of us would have come across uh, some of these ones, as you can see. You see these ones more commonly in house sound systems, home theater systems, loudspeakers that are used in the home. Uh, they are differentiated by the color red and black. Black would be like negative, red would be positive. Uh, again, when wiring, care needs to be taken so that you don't reverse the connections arbitrarily between the speakers. Otherwise, you may get cancellation from the system while they are working. This is a coil of such a cable. I'm sure many of us are familiar with. These ones tend to be more rugged, more for touring than these other ones. Uh, in sound reinforcement, you see more of this, where the two conductors are, uh, they are, they are, they are covered with, with an outer uh, cover, which stops the cables from being exposed to uh, other interference or to touch while being in use. And then we have this, uh, an unusual type, it's flat wound for special applications. And you can see the terminals at the end are the pin terminals, the ones we call the banana plugs. They just plug into the terminals that you want to use them with. And then we have these other multi-core uh, speaker cables. Notice that there's no shielding at all in most of these ones, except here, where uh, in this particular case, it's still a speaker cable, because what we have is really not a shield. It's just something to protect it, probably from moisture or whatever it is. There are special application cables that are used in uh, special environments. So you, ha you have um, here six speaker cables, which um, each speaker needs two cables. So this means this particular cable, the multi-core will be used for up to three loud speakers. Now with um, the final one here is the AES EBU. These are necessarily digital signals. As you can see, labeled on the cable, you can see DMX written somewhere. They carry digital signals and they have shielding also to prevent magnetic interference or electrostatic interference. So they are used for that. Those, that's the kind of protocol for connecting some of our devices. Um, I believe this brings us to the end of this particular discussion. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Uh, if you've been here this long, thank you for paying attention. Once again, my name is Adi Oyerinde. I run a company, Pro Solid View Electro Limited. We sell, install, and we consult on audio 
equipment. If you want more in-depth information about all of this, please get across to us. Thank you very much, everyone.